Hi everyone. Hope you've all had a good few days off. Not much of a holiday, I know, but at least it's been a little bit of time to recharge the batteries and get the old grey matter working again. A bit better news this week. At least you'll be able to meet up with a friend or two and sit in the park, have a coffee somewhere. Or, of course, if you're into sports, you might get to start a few of those up again. Not great news for everybody for school and getting back to school, but at least we're moving in the right direction now. A lot of us are still stuck at home, having to work from home, having to school from home. Almost overnight, everything, the way we learn, the way we're taught, everything's changed. And it might have been good at the start, you know, don't have to get out of bed as early, you can start your school day whenever you want to. Not having to get up early to catch the bus and to get into school, not having to put your uniform on. It was all, I'm sure it was all quite good at the start, but now, not so much. It's all getting a bit old, isn't it? And of course now the big worry for everybody is how we're all going to come out of this mentally, how our mental health might suffer because of it all. There are a lot of problems that contribute to mental health problems. Problems with the family, illness, parents separating, problems at school, peer pressure, bullying, money. Money's always a problem, isn't it? Consumerism, having to have the best lifestyle and the best body. And also for some violence, war, inequality, the list goes on and on. All of these can contribute to our mental health. But right now, the number one worry at the top of all of our lists is the impact that coronavirus is going to have on our mental health. You are not alone in thinking that. We're all thinking it. It's been a really uncertain time for all of us. So it's only natural that it's going to affect our mental health in lots of different ways. Whatever you're feeling right now is completely valid. But with the right help and by supporting each other, we will get through it all. And unlike this time last year, there's real hope on the horizon this time. Things are looking up. Things will get back to a new kind of normal. If you're finding yourself feeling really down during self-isolation, it can be really easy to slip into the mindset that you're on your own. This is not the case. We are all in it together. Yes, we're all individuals. Yes, we are all very different. And yes, we all have different coping mechanisms. Many of us shout, stomp our feet. Some of us cry. Some of us maybe struggle to socialise. Some of us withdraw. And some of us just struggle to commit to our responsibilities. The thing to remember is you are not alone. We're all in this. We're all part of one big community. And we can all support each other and help each other through. Studying full time from home can bring with it some pretty big challenges. And for some people, it can take a huge toll on our mental health. No matter who or what organisation you turn to for advice, they will all be unanimous with the top tips on how to look after your mental health, how to stay motivated while we're all stuck at home. And these are the five ways to wellbeing. Connect. Take notice. Be active, keep learning, and give. We've pretty much covered ways to do all this in the first lockdown assembly, so today I'm not going to go over them again, but I am going to focus on our minds, because focus on our minds gives us perspective, peace, and an overall sense of well-being. And it is worth doing as one of the best ways to manage mental health is to learn how to look after our own well-being. If we're happier as individuals, it's likely that a positive outlook will rub off on others around us too. And improving your well-being can add up to seven years to your life. So what are you waiting for? The Greek word for mind refers to our understanding, attitude and entire way of thinking. In some ways, the word mind here could be translated as worldview, a mental lens through which we view, interpret and respond to the world around us. Look in a mirror. Think about how you looked three months ago. Will you still look the same in three months' time? 
a vital task you face is discovering who you are and to be recognised by your own strengths, interests, passions, gifts and weaknesses. But as you seek to please others and become who you think others want you to be, they can shut down your process of self-discovery. Mindfulness activities will help you experience the present, reduce stress and overcome anxiety, and concentrate on what is actually happening. Recognise your feelings. Enjoy life for what it is. I can just imagine you sitting there rolling your eyes or fast forwarding right now. That's fine. If you've nothing left to learn, you've heard it all before. The question you should be asking is, if I'm hearing this over time and time again, then maybe there's a reason and I should actually listen. Go on, I dare you. Mindfulness is a state of mind that allows us to be present, allows us to realise and recognise life for what it is. Being mindful helps people do better in just about every part of life. Focusing on schoolwork, feeling less stressed out. Practising mindfulness a little bit every day helps you to build this valuable skill. The following suggestions will help you practice mindfulness in different ways. Give them a try. No one will know but you and shock horror they might actually help. As you attempt some of them, you'll probably find that your mind wanders off after a minute or two. That's completely normal. Our minds do that. Your job is to gently bring your attention back to the thing you are focused on. The more you practice doing that, the better you train your brain to pay attention. How can we deny the effect of music on our feelings? Melodies have an amazing effect on our soul and just listening to the right music can make a huge difference. Mindful listening to music allows self-observing, promotes happiness and helps overcome anxiety and stress. Apparently instrumental music works best to develop mindfulness in combating teenage angst. But if you have a taste for other genres, that'll work as well. Before starting, tune in to your feelings. As you listen to the music, notice your feelings without any criticism of what they are. Keep in mind that music affects us whether we want it to or not. So it's okay to feel anger if you're listening to heavy metal. Notice how your body reacts to every beat. When you finish the exercise, think about how the feelings that surfaced. Which takes us on to mindful dancing. Our bodies have a natural inner rhythm, from the beat of our hearts to the pulse in our veins. When we follow rhythm, we can find some inner peace and peace of mind. Dance like me. Cooking has been a therapeutic activity for many years now. But mindful cooking is taking it a step further. As you immerse yourself and think about nothing but the recipe, It makes you focus, concentrate, be grateful for what you've got. So pick a recipe that suits your taste, prepare the ingredients, set it up and let's cook. As you go on with the process, focus on the food and how it reacts to fire or ice or any of the other procedures that you have to go through. Listen to the sound as you stir and you mix. Keep in, breathe in the aromas and the scents that you release as you go. Once you've finished, enjoy the textures and all the different tastes. Just sit, eat in peace and quiet, concentrating only on the smell and the taste and the texture of what you've created. Activities like solving puzzles require a great amount of focus, otherwise even a fun activity can become stressful. Lack of focus results in insufficient work, poor grades and much more besides. So sharpening your focusing skills can be really helpful. We tend to live our lives without thinking about the consequences that often. This mindfulness exercise will allow thinking before acting, develop self-soothing skills, expand our focus. You should use a pen instead of a pencil. Then if you make mistakes, they'll be hard to erase. Think about the emotions that you reflect. Why did you make the mistake? Did you rush it? 
How frustrated or angry did it make you? When your feelings surface, find a way to make up your mind again with the help of breathing and keep going. Once you've finished the puzzle, think about how you felt through the whole process and why and how long it took you to get back on track. Mindful colouring is one of the creative mindfulness techniques for any age. I hear you laughing, but don't knock it till you've tried it, folks. This activity helps you feel more present and calms your mind while chasing worries away. But all you have to do is concentrate on yourself. I've actually used this technique on stressed out parents, maybe even yours, and I guarantee it works. True story. Morning, folks. After being stuck in the house for three days in this horrible, wet, wintry, sleety weather, I've decided enough's enough. So I've brought you to another happy place. Further along, the wind and the rain's getting really heavy now. I hope you can still hear me okay. Following the river. As we learn how to walk as a child, we start to not care about it. It comes so naturally to us, we don't give it a second thought. But if we just spare a minute to focus on our steps, it may make a huge difference. Mindful walking allows us to clear our mind. It reduces stress and anxiety. It allows us to be present, appreciate our health, and have gratitude, even in the rain. No matter how many times I come out into this view, it never gets old. We're so blessed here. And yeah, lockdown's been rubbish, but we've been very lucky that this is just one of the many, many bits we can come. These are just five minutes from our doorstep. We've got a lot to be thankful for. Just have to keep reminding ourselves of that. Sun's back out today, so I am beside the River Esk. Find a silent, peaceful location and here's the real challenge. Do not listen to music through your headphones. Instead, focus on your surroundings. Take note of the colours you see around you. Breathe in the aromas. And just close your eyes. Listen. And breathe. We're plenty I think the ducks are starting to annoy in a bit. We take hundreds of breaths every day, but knowing how to control your breathing is really important and a useful type of meditation, especially for teens. Just breathe in, out and relax. Appreciate where you are and what surrounds you. Mindfulness breathing helps combat frustration, worry, calms the mind and reduces stress. It also helps us overcome anxiety and promotes peaceful thinking. It gives us room for expressing our emotions. Just sit for a few minutes, paying attention to your gentle breathing. See how relaxed you can feel just sitting, breathing in and out. When your mind starts to wander and think about something else, just gently guide your attention back to your breathing. In. A few minutes of this every day can work wonders for centering you and bringing you back to the present. Water is a miracle of nature that always has a soothing effect on people. Try taking a mindful bath or a shower if you don't have a tub. Mindful bathing exercises can help you focus on your feelings and reflect on them. It also calms the mind allowing you to be present. As you draw a bath, use things like Epsom salts and essential oils, then inhale the aroma as the tub fills. If you feel shower, you can let the water flow down from the top and light some scented candles for an additional soothing effect. Once you feel relaxed, let the water out and visualise any stress or anxiety disappearing down the plug hole. What's really important to remember is that every single person in the world is currently being affected in one way or another by what's going on with coronavirus. We're all in the same boat, which means that tons of people across the world are worried, 
they're scared, they're anxious. And if you're feeling any of these things, have a look at sites like Mind or Better Still Young Mind for ideas and advice. Reach out. Chat with your parents, those you live with, your friends, family members, your teachers even about how you're feeling. Sharing how we feel and talking about it helps everyone. And they're probably feeling the same way too right now. But until you ask, you won't know. Stay connected with people because we really are all in this together. Take care. Stay safe. It won't be long now. Look after yourselves.